Would you like to learn how to turn a good cake into a great cake? Well, today on WTF, we're going to compare and contrast some of the best ingredients for your cake and your icing. Hello and welcome to WTF, where we transform food here in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen. I'm Chef Scott Garrett. And I'm Janie Wang, one of the owners of Modernist Pantry. Here on WTF, every week we talk about unique ingredients and techniques and show you recipes for your kitchen. So remember, subscribe and ring the bell, and we are doing our weekly giveaway as well, so stay tuned. This week, we are going to be talking all about cakes and how do you get the best cake possible and turn your good cake recipe into a great cake recipe. And I think the perfect place to start there, Scott, is um, with we get a lot of calls, a lot of emails. What are the most common issues that people face when they have a cake recipe? So staling is going to be number one. Uh, is your cake going stale? If you cut a slice off of it and then you want to keep it either in the refrigerator or out on your counter for the night or the day, is it going to stale really quickly? Mm -hmm. Are you going to get that staling go you know deeper into the cake as well as the frosting? Are you going to need this in a slightly warmer environment? What are some things that are you're going to have to do to prevent this from just you know dripping all of its frosting off or mm -hmm. the frosting completely weeping and ruining whatever design you have on it. So there's a lot of little issues that can come with a cake that can then ruin your cake. Yeah, so we kind of thought what made the most sense in this episode is to separate it a little bit into a two-part R&D, right? The first is the staling issue with the cake itself, and the second is the you know melting and texture issue with the frosting itself. Mm -hmm. So in order to do this, ah, in order to do this, <laughs> we had ourselves a base recipe that we kind of then you know tested a bunch of stuff with. I'm gonna let Scott talk all about that, <laughs> but I'm excited because we did birthday cake and my birthday is coming up. So I was like, sweet, I get to eat cake yes. on or near my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we wanted. Whenever you're having a, a cake recipe, always make sure that you use a you know. Uh, a great cake recipe. Don't just you know go on the internet and just pick the first one you see. Make sure you know who's making it uh, and everything about it. So we picked probably our favorite cake recipe or my personal favorite cake recipe, which is Milk Bar, which this is already an amazing cake. Mm -hmm. So why not try and you know see if we could just improve a little bit here and there uh, to get a slightly better cake or you know a cake that lasts longer because it already tastes delicious. So we know that. Let's see if we can then gear it towards making it last longer and not weep and things like that. So first thing we wanted to do is try a couple different stabilizers in with the uh, the cake itself. So we went with liquid sunflower less than, mm -hmm. uh, glycerol monostyrate or GMS, or sodium stearyl lactylate, which we'll call SSL from now on. Okay. <laughs> so the issue that we found, obviously staling is going to be an issue. This mm -hmm. cake has uh, a lot of fat. It's a very rich cake. Uh, it's perfectly airy, but over time it's going to lose that. It's just always going to lose some of that water unless you have some sort of emulsifier to stabilize the cake. Mm -hmm. So we went with three different ones, like I said, and the one that we found that we personally liked was uh, liquid sunflower lecithin. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason why that is, is liquid sunflower lecithin is a fat-based emulsifier, and there's a lot of fat in this with small amounts of water, so it's going to do a better job of holding on to that water. Mm -hmm. So if you like a dense cake, that is a great one. That's what we wanted for this, a rich, dense cake that doesn't really uh, lose any moisture. The other two that we had also worked really great for this, and there's a couple of things with the, uh, that benefit from those two. All right, so let's, why don't we walk through, and maybe we can start with uh, the original recipe and taste test what each emulsifier did for sure. it. Sure. Do you want to try them? I, def try I definitely do. Here, we, we'll do Thank TV you. size bites. And then, I guess, how long ago was this cake made? This was one day ago. Okay. So this was made yesterday around this time, about 24 hours ago. Mm -hmm. It was left uncovered uh, for six hours, covered overnight. Yeah, so this is the original milk bar recipe. Mm -hmm. It's tasty, certainly, but I can taste it's already starting to dry out. It's starting to get yes. hard. Mm -hmm. And just know I didn't. So there is a brush that generally put on this recipe of um, milk and um, vanilla flavoring. I didn't do that with this because I didn't want to kind of hinder our test here. Mm -hmm. Right. So you can put the dirty ones here. All right. And then we can go into the 
liquid. Let me get a good bit of this for you. Thank you. Uh, liquid sunflower lecithin. And mm -hmm. I like this one. I can even see it. There's just a little bit um, more moisture retention you can see on the outside of this. Yep. You can kind of see it's got like a very tender crumb. Mm -hmm. It has got a little bit of density. It's very consistent. Mm -hmm. Right? There isn't like a grittiness that which we will definitely talk about in the next one. Okay. That it's almost like a biscuit. Mm -hmm. Right? So, not to kill the lead here, but that's what we found with a Thank perfect you. little piece for you. When I taste the GMS, it kind of breaks apart. It's almost biscuity. Like, the crumb is so short that I get almost like granules when I taste it compared but to the SSL or yeah. to the so liquid sunflower, sunflower less than lots of S's. Yeah. Interestingly enough, I think I like this one a little bit better. Oh, you do? I do. And okay. I think that's kind of um, like reflects one of the things that recipes are very yep. individual, right? So obviously we're doing these and we're testing and we're kind of judging them according to our taste and you might find yep. you like one better than the other. But I think I like this one a little bit more. I kind of like that shortness. Okay. Yeah. The last one is the SSL. And I found that you can even see with just this portion of the cake, it's extremely consistent, mm -hmm. which may be something people are looking for. So if you right. want a consistent cake, look, at from the, the edge to the center, oh, yeah. is almost exactly the same. Mm -hmm. And that's great. Where on this one, I use the uh, liquid sunflower less than, and it does have a little bit of dips. And definitely on, you can see on the control, there's some right. dips in it, right? You don't have to press it. You don't have to trim it or anything. This is extremely consistent. Mm -hmm. So we can try this last one here. And did you use the same ratios in all these cakes or they were all different? I used the individual ratios so it best reflected each one of these okay. um, ingredients. Yeah, I didn't want to go with the exact same ratio across the board because then that wouldn't be good. So I used the best ratio for each ingredient. Mm -hmm. That's a really excellent cake. Yeah. So I feel like with the SSL, it's a little bit drier, mm -hmm. maybe even shorter. Yes. Yeah. To the than the GMS, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you're definitely gonna get um, consistency, but then maybe you are gonna need that, you know, that milk wash that goes on to it to make it a little bit more dense, rich. Yeah, I would say all across the board, you know, each of the ones with an emulsifier added is better after the one day mm -hmm. compared to the control. Um, you know, I would say my favorite is the GMS, Scott's yep. favorite is the lecithin. Maybe your favorite would be the SSL, so who knows? You yeah, know, you can I try really them like out. rich, yeah. really rich cakes, so that, that's probably why that was mine. All right. <laughs> so it's definitely personal preference, but each one of these works awesome whenever you're making a cake, and we'll reflect that in our uh, recipe. So. Yeah, and before we move on to the icing, can you talk really quick, quickly about, for people who haven't used them before, how do you incorporate them into their recipe? So this is going to be the difficult part when I put together the recipe is because each one's like slightly different. Mm -hmm. The GMS and the SSL will be similar that they are going to go into the, the dry part of your mix and then will be added. But the liquid sunflower less than I add during the creaming process, which is the butter and the sugars, okay. because I want it to mix in with the fat. And then when I add in the, um, the eggs and then the milk and oil, this recipe has so much milk and oil to the amount of flour and obviously fat as well with the butter that it's just, it's so much. So I wanted to get it in there early, make that emulsion really strong. And then mm -hmm. the flour goes in there and it's only mixed for about 10 to 30 seconds, just until it's incorporated. So okay. you are getting like a nice fluffy light texture. So really early in the process, really late in the process for these two. And like I said, it'll all be reflected in the recipe. So if you want to check it, we'll let you know where and when you can add these ingredients. Yeah, and that'll be really useful because, you know, obviously we love this recipe, but what we want is to empower you to use them in your own recipes. Yes. Um, and of course, I do. That brings me to this week's giveaway. So this week's giveaway will be one emulsifier from each of these categories. So you can try it in your cake and you can try it in your icing. So you can pick from one of these. And in order to enter to win, just leave in the comments below your favorite type of cake. And it's that simple. All right, now let's talk about the icing. Which products did you test in order to um, decide how do we get, you know, that best texture and consistency and lasting power on that icing? Yeah, so obviously we have our control here and we'll, we'll test that first and then we can go into it. But then I tested uh, sucrose esters, which is a ingredient that we've incorporated into frosting before to help prevent any weeping. Mm -hmm. uh, just so when you have that frosting, it's not going to then pull any moisture out and then you have these little water spots on the outside. Then those water spots start to pull out sugar. It's, it turns into a complete mess. 
So that's the first that would first one that we have here. Okay. The second one is actually at the end, which is polysorbate 80. Mm -hmm. And we tested that one because it's a great emulsifier. Mm -hmm. But we found it did something really odd to the icing. It's something I've never seen before. It has a great consistency, but it's it's uh, very light. And we'll definitely talk about that. So what we did is we had also tested monodiglyceride flakes, which is a fat-based emulsifier. So we went with a mixture of both, and that's the one that we have here. So we have this excellent texture, as well as the monodiglycerides, which uh, is a higher melting temperature okay. than like butter and shortening and things like that. So that way you're not going to have all of your icing melt off. So we wanted to give three different things that you can absolutely use to, you know, make different types of icing out of the exact same recipe and how to improve it and where to improve it. Yeah. And one of the interesting things about this is that you can kind of see already that unlike the cake, which aside from that evenness, more or less looks very similar, yes. but the icing actually all look incredibly different. They do look incredibly different. And there's different ways to add all of these ingredients too, which is uh, great. So this, this recipe is the, uh, the milk bar recipe. It has shortening, it has butter, it has uh, cream cheese. Mm -hmm. If you just wanted to make a regular buttercream, you can just use butter. That's totally fine. Mm -hmm. It's really just about understanding where to add these ingredients in. Yeah, and this is a pretty good icing, you know, exactly as it is. Mm -hmm. But let's try the other ones. And this one is the sucrose esters. So, and I believe you said that helps with weeping if you're in a very humid, yes. hot climate. Yeah, so you can see the, the texture on it. So this one, mm. when I'm adding this, I heat up the uh, vanilla flavoring that goes into this so that the sucrose esters are fully hydrated and mm -hmm. then I add them early on in the process. And you can also see, I cool it obviously before so it's not gonna break any of the fats. But you can definitely see like a different color and mm -hmm. a different texture, but yeah. it helps with that. It's denser mm -hmm. than the original for sure, but that's probably also part of what makes yep. it hold better. I mean, it's still delicious. It's still icing. <laughs> right. And this icing is really nice. It has a little bit of salt and it has a little bit of citric acid, so kind of cuts through that fat naturally. Okay. I don't, I don't think I could eat an entire cake. All right. Probably could, but. And this is the polysorbate and Let's try the polysorbate on the end this first. All right. Yeah, so and bring then that we can talk here. about it. Because you can immediately see, if we can get a great shot of that, like compared to the. Um, it almost looks like whipped cream at this yeah, point. Yeah, and it's very glossy, mm -hmm. like extremely glossy. So I found that this is very smooth. Mm -hmm. Almost like a store bought. You know, I get one of those containers that sits on the shelf indefinitely. It's it's that smoothness, mm -hmm. um, but I don't know. It's very melty. If I were to try and actually you know crumb coat this cake, mm. it would not work. It would definitely drip off. Yeah, I have to say I don't like the way that one tastes. Like the the poly sorbet, which naturally has a tiny bit of like bitter bit flavor, of the, is yeah. coming through. So I'm not a fan of that. But this next one, All right has much less of the polysorbate. So that's like the, the usual ratio, which is a 0.5% to the total weight. This mm -hmm. has less, but then it has uh, monodiglyceride flakes in it. Okay. And this, you're adding two different emulsifiers. So immediately I add in the polysorbate when I start it. So that's what the first two are. Mm -hmm. And then I heat up the monodiglycerides and I gently emulsify that in. So I drip it in to the fat and it really starts to mix in because if you don't, you're just gonna be mixing in these flakes that will never melt. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, this one has a really creamy texture. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the original is probably the lightest of the icings. Mm -hmm. This one's a little bit heavier, but definitely not as dense as the yes. sucrose esters. Yeah, I kind of like this. Mm. It has a great flavor, great texture. I think if you're if your icing is suffering from issues, I would think that this is the one that yeah, you're going to want to try like. first. Yeah. And how much of the monodiglyceride and polysorbate so is in here? So about 4% monodiglycerides to the total mm -hmm. weight of the recipe, mm -hmm. or the total weight of the fat in the recipe. That's an important part. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it's about 0.25%, so almost like one drop of polysorbate right. 80 mm -hmm. for uh, a recipe that's going to cover one of these cakes totally. So yeah. that all reflect in the recipe. We can definitely, you know, if you want to see it, link in the description below. Um, but it'll all be there. So it's a very, very small amount compared to the regular ratio, which is about 0.5, which could be like two to three drops, which mm -hmm. then you kind of might get that flavor. Yeah. So 
you know, of course you can get all this information and some of you might be thinking, isn't glycerol monastery and mono and diglyceride the same thing? If you know, like yes and no, check out our episode all about that topic. We're going to link to it at the very end. So, you know, we can go into that further at another time. Um, so what we kind of wanted to do here today is just kind of give you different options and showcase different types of emulsifiers and stabilizers that you can use in cakes. Because one of the questions we get all the time is, what's the best ingredient for this? What's mm -hmm. the best ingredient for that? And the answer is always, it depends. So hopefully you're gonna have some fun experimenting. Remember to enter to win by leaving in the comments your favorite type of cake. And then until next week, from here to Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen, I'm Janie Wang. And I'm Scott Guerin.